Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your watchful care over us this past week. We thank you so much for your protection from danger seen and unseen, Father. We thank you so much that you love us so much that you would watch over us, watch over everything that would cause harm to us. Father, we thank you for how you are working in our lives. We thank you for what you've done, what you're doing right now, and for what you're going to do. We thank you so much for bringing us to another Holy Sabbath day. We thank you that we're able to study your word free of persecution. We're able to study your word freely. And we're able to have a better understanding of your word, to draw closer to you through your written word. So, Father, as we prepare to continue our study today concerning the two women mentioned in your word in the book of Revelation, please prepare our hearts and minds to receive that which you have to teach us today. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to another edition of Eyes on Prophecy here on the WSLM Radio Ministry Podcast, where we stand for God's truth, not man's traditions, and we bring you straight Bible truth for these last days with the love of Jesus. The WSLM Radio Ministry Podcast is a global outreach ministry of Sacrificial Lamb Ministries. We are outreach driven. My name is Pastor Vince Wilson. I am the host of the WSLM Radio Ministry Podcast. I am under the guidance. I am under the leading of the Holy Spirit, who is our true teacher. And I'm just going to allow him to speak and teach through me what we need to know from his word concerning Bible prophecy, concerning these two women mentioned in the book of Revelation. That's the study that we're uh, currently in right now. We're in our, uh, our teaching series called That Other Woman. This is part three in that series. Today is Sabbath, September 28th, 2024. And we're just making our way through this lesson. The Holy Spirit is showing us so much. He has shown us so much thus far concerning these two women in the book of Revelation. So what I would like to do is just do a quick review of what we covered last week and then, you know, get right into our studies for today. So I hope you got your Bible already handy. I hope you got it out in front of you. If you don't have it out in front of you, please go ahead and grab your Bible, some paper, pencil, pen, your device, whatever you're reading your Bible on, whatever you're taking your notes on, please go ahead and grab those right now if you haven't already done so. And once you have your Bible open in front of you, or once you have your Bible in front of you, please go ahead and open up to the book of Genesis, uh, Genesis uh, chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. We're going to be starting today's material from Genesis chapter 11. But in the meantime, in between time, I want to do a quick review of what we covered last week, which kind of includes what we covered last week and the previous week. As I said, today is part three. So what I'm going to talk about, um, I mean, what I'm going to share with you, uh, what I'm going to go over with you or review with you at this point is what we covered last week, which is a portion of what we covered the previous week. So basically, I'm going to review uh, parts one and two with you in just a few moments. Again, not in their entirety, but just a little bit of what we covered over the past a couple weeks, all right? So again, we're looking at um, uh, the two women. Our series is called That Other Woman, and I'll, I'll explain further what I mean by that other woman. If this is your first time studying with us here on Eyes on Prophecy concerning this particular lesson series called that other woman, I I welcome you to this podcast. I welcome you to this series on our program, our weekly program called Eyes on Prophecy. I hope you will continue to uh, to study with us, to join us every week here on the podcast for Eyes on Prophecy. All right, let's go ahead and, as I said, do a quick review of what we covered last week. Last week, we talked about 
uh, the two women in Bible prophecy. We broke that down a bit. Um, again, you know, just as a reminder, just a quick reminder, this series is called That Other Woman. So there are two women mentioned in the Bible, in the book of Revelation. There's the pure woman, which symbolizes a pure church that is faithful to Jesus. And then there's the impure woman, which represents an impure or fallen church that is unfaithful to Jesus. So as we continue to move forward through our lesson series, um, you should have a, a clear understanding of what makes one woman different from the other. The Bible calls the woman a harlot. Okay, well, let me back up. From our symbols in Bible prophecy, we know that a woman equals church. When the Bible speaks of woman, the Bible is referring to church. But now there are two churches, as I've just said, there are two women, meaning there are two churches. I said that there is the impure woman, which represents that other woman, which is why I entitled this series That Other Woman. So there's one woman who is impure, who is not faithful to Jesus, that is fallen. That's the impure woman or the impure church or the fallen church. Then there's the pure woman that's faithful to Jesus, and that is the pure church. So two women, two churches. I hope you get it. So that's what we're talking about when we you know when we're talking about that other woman, that other woman is referring to the impure woman or the harlot. Uh, depending on what translation you're using, I know the New King James says harlot. I know the, the King James says whore. But either way, when you see whore or harlot, it's referring to the impure woman or the impure church. That's the church that none of us should want to be a part of. We should want to be a part of the church that is faithful to Jesus. So hopefully that'll lay the groundwork for you if this is your first time. Lay the groundwork for you as we continue to move forward through this teaching series. We also talked about um, this question. We looked at this question. Uh, this is a question and answer format. If you're new to this, uh, this podcast, to this program called Eyes on Prophecy, we go through various lessons every so many weeks, uh, depending on the length of the lesson. But it's basically a uh, question and answer format. So we also looked at the question last week, which says, can we identify the harlot? Speaking of church, I just said that harlot is referring to the impure church or the impure woman, which equals church in the Bible. In Bible prophecy, that is. So can we identify the harlot or church that is called, quote, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, end quote, in, Re in Revelation chapter 17. So that's the foundation of our studies for this lesson called That Other Woman. Well, really, we're coming from the Amazing Facts Study Guides, which um, we are in study guide number 22, it's actually called The Other Woman, but I entitled this series That Other Woman. All right. The foundation of this particular lesson series on, on The Other Woman or That Other Woman, as it is called here, um, our foundation is Revelation chapter 17. So I'll reread the question. Can we identify the harlot or church that is called, quote, Babylon the Great? the mother of harlots, end quote, in Revelation chapter 17. Here's our answer. Yes, it is widely known that there is only one church that claims to be the mother church, and that mother church is the Roman Catholic church. So, again, this may be new to you, and because this is your first time, you don't know what I'm talking about right now. You may not know what I'm talking about. I don't know. You may, you may not. But we're talking about this church that considers itself the mother church. We're talking about the Roman Catholic Church. So you're saying, Pastor, what does the Roman Catholic Church have to do with this? Well, friend, we've studied uh, how the Roman Catholic Church, the papacy, you know, uh, plays a role in Bible prophecy, has played a role in Bible, has 
has played a role in, in Bible prophecy for some time and continues to play a role in Bible prophecy. So what I will do right now is ask you to go back and look at our previous studies, um, our previous programs, our previous episodes here on Eyes on Prophecy. We had one called Who is the Antichrist? We had one called The Mark of the Beast. Going all the way back to just over a year ago, really, when we started this uh, this series. We started uh, sometime like the end of July. As a matter of fact, I remember it was uh, July 29th. I looked it up. July 29th, we started our series on Bible prophecy. We went through the uh, the symbols in Bible prophecy first, and then we got into our first lesson in this series, which was called, Who is the Antichrist? So I encourage you to go back and find Eyes on Prophecy, Who is the Antichrist? And work your way up until we get to this uh, current lesson, until you get to this current lesson. And you should have a better understanding from the Bible, that is, why the Roman Catholic Church is mentioned in this lesson series. So, it is widely known that there's only one church that claims to be the mother church, and that is the Roman Catholic Church. Now, a prominent Catholic priest named John A. O'Brien said this, and I quote, that observance, meaning Sunday keeping, remains as a reminder of the mother church from which the non-Catholic sects broke away, end quote. Again, that came from John A. O'Brien. And as a matter of fact, that, uh, that quote comes from his book called The Faith of Millions. It was published in 1974, and that actually comes from page 401 of that particular book. All right. So the points used in Revelation 17, as I said, our foundation is Revelation 17 for this particular lesson series. The points used in Revelation 17 to describe Mother Babylon and the beast she rides fit the papacy. So as I already said, we're talking about the Roman Catholic Church. We're talking about the papacy. And I feel impressed to say this right now. I've said this before and in, in, uh, during our past studies. But for those who are, who are going to hear this for the first time, when we're talking about the Catholic Church, we're talking about the papacy, we're not saying that. If you are a Catholic, I don't know, friend, I don't know you, I don't know who you are right now, I don't know who's listening, but if you happen to be of the Catholic faith, of the Catholic denomination, we're not saying that, oh, just because you're Catholic, you're evil, you're an evil person, blah, 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 that's not what we're saying. What we're talking about, when it comes to Bible prophecy, we're talking about a system. We're not talking about the people themselves. We're talking about a system that Satan is working through to carry out his agenda. I've said that during uh, past lesson studies. And I just want to say that again for people who are hearing me say this for the first time. So moving forward, hopefully you will continue to stay, um, you know, to stay with us and to study with us from time to time. I will, I will uh, remind you by saying that we're not talking about uh, Catholic people being evil or anything of that nature. We're talking about the system. So we're talking about the Catholic Church system, the Roman Catholic Church system, uh, its leadership and so forth, who Satan is working through to carry out his agenda. We've covered that in past lessons as well. So I just felt I needed just, you know, I needed to just put that out there again. So let's look at uh, five different points that we talked about last week concerning this particular question. So, A, she persecuted the saints, according to verse 6 of Revelation 17. Again, this question is talking about Revelation 17, and we're going to look at various verses, uh, which will highlight different points um, to answer this question. Can we identify the harlot or church that is called uh, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots? In Revelation chapter 17. So the first point, she persecuted the saints, as mentioned in verse 6. Uh, we talked about this way back in uh, Who is the Antichrist? That lesson series on Who is the Antichrist? As well as the lesson series on the Mark of the Beast. We covered those already. I encourage you to go back and listen to those. Who is the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast under the program Eyes on prophecy. So the first point, once again, she persecuted the saints, found in verse 6. Point number 2, or B, she was dressed in purple and scarlet, 
as the Bible points out in verse 4 of Revelation 17. Now, here's something you may or may not have known. The Pope often wears the royal color of purple at important functions, and red is the color of the robes of Catholic cardinals. C. The seven heads of the beast, as mentioned in verse 4, I'm sorry, verse 3, as mentioned in verse 3 of Revelation 17, the seven heads of the beast upon which the woman is seated are seven mountains, mentioned in verse 9 of Revelation 17. Now, it is well known that Rome, which is the headquarters of the papacy, is built upon seven hills or mountains. That's just a fact, folks. That's just a fact. That is a fact. Okay, you can look it up, you can Google it, whatever. Uh, the Bible confirms it, the Bible talks about it. That's why we're focusing on Revelation 17. Yeah, it is well known that Rome, the headquarters of the papacy, is built upon seven hills or mountains. D, the beast is guilty of blasphemy, according to verse 3 of Revelation 17. I hope you're jotting these down. That's why I say to grab something to write with, to write on. You got your Bible with you. You can go back and read and study for yourself. You don't have to. Just take my word for it. Uh, go back and study and read for yourself. I'll repeat that, uh, that point. The beast is guilty of blasphemy, according to, Re uh, to Revelation 17, verse 3, a point that also clearly fits the papacy. Uh, again, we talked about this way back in previous lesson studies. We talked about it uh, during Who is the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast as well. So... The things that we're covering right now and moving forward, we, we've already talked about. We're just, you know, we're building on what we've already talked about. Every lesson that we go through is building upon the previous lesson. So that by the time we finish this particular lesson series or this lesson series on uh, Bible prophecy, uh, uh, prayerfully, you'll have a clearer uh, biblical viewpoint of uh, the mark of the beast, the antichrist. And how it's important to understand these things as we are living in the last days of earth's history. Friend, I don't know if you believe that yet, but prayerfully by the end of this um, series of studies, you will have a, a, a clearer understanding with the help of the Holy Spirit that, yes, we are living in the last days. Jesus is soon to come. This is not playtime. Playtime is over. We need to get right with God now while there's still time, because once Jesus comes, it's too late. I've said that many times in past episodes as well, but I'm saying a lot of, of things that I've said already for people who are just hearing me say these things for the first time, and you'll probably hear me say these things again as we continue to move forward. Our last point, she ruled, quote, over the kings of the earth, according to verse 18 of Revelation 17. Now, here's another quote for you. Alexander Flick says, that by the 13th century, the Pope was, quote, at least in theory, the ruler of the whole world in temporal and spiritual affairs, end quote. That quote comes from a book called The Rise of the Medieval. I'm sorry, the, ride of the Rise of the Medieval Church, that is. The Rise of the Medieval Church, uh, published in 1959, and that comes from page 575 of that book. So this point could fit no other earthly kingdom or government. The papacy is described in Revelation 17 too clearly for doubt. So if you want to get a clear understanding, if you don't have one already, if you want to get a clear understanding of how the papacy uh, fits in uh, to Bible prophecy, has for many years, for many generations, continues to fit into a Bible prophecy and moving forward will continue to play a role in Bible prophecy according to the Bible. Read Revelation 17 and ask the Holy Spirit to give you clarity as to the role that the papacy will continue to play in Bible prophecy. All right, let's go ahead and get into our new material for today. We just did a, uh, a quick study. I wanted to move through, uh, through that review a little quicker, but I wanted to, you know, slow it down. I didn't want to get too, you know, too far ahead of you. I didn't want to speed through this material because there's just so much that we need to know and understand. And sure, yeah, you know, we don't want to rush. You know, uh, we want to take our time. So 
Uh, with the time that we have left, I didn't think that was going to take that much time, but with the time that we have left, because we meet roughly about 30 minutes each episode, um, yes, we want to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, but at the same time, we know how the human brain works. The brain can only take in but so much at a time, and yeah, you know, uh, we don't want to overwhelm you with too much in one episode. So here's the question we want to look at for today. What is the literal meaning of the word Babylon? Many of you, I'm sure, have heard the word Babylon before. But what is the literal meaning of the word Babylon, and what is its origin? Okay, I asked you to open your Bibles earlier to uh, to Genesis chapter 11, Genesis chapter 11, and let's take a look at Genesis 11, verses 4, 6, 7, and 9. Genesis 11, starting at verse 4. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Revelation 11, verse 4 says, says, And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Next, verse 7. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. And verse 9, Therefore its name is called Babel. Some say Babel. Therefore its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. So we've just defined from the Bible's help, uh, with the Bible's help from the Bible, the uh, definition of of uh, of uh, Babel, some say Babel. So here's the answer to our question. The question once again is, what is the literal meaning of the word Babylon, and what is its origin? We just read from the Bible. Here's our answer: the words uh, Babel or Babel and Babylon mean confusion. So uh, Babel or Babel and Babylon mean confusion. The name Babylon originated at the Tower of Babel, which was erected after the flood by defiant pagans who hoped to build it so high that no floodwaters could ever cover it. That's according to verse 4 of Revelation uh, chapter 11. We just read that. But the Lord confounded their language, and the resultant confusion was so great they were forced to halt construction. They then called the tower Babel or Babel uh, or Babylon or confusion. Later, in Old Testament days, a worldwide pagan kingdom named Babylon arose. It was an enemy of God's people, Israel. We're talking about Israel. It embodied rebellion, disobedience, persecution of God's people, pride, and idolatry. You may want to note uh, Jeremiah 39, verses 6 and 7. Jeremiah 50, verse 29, as well as Jeremiah 50, 31 through 34. Jeremiah 51, verse, uh, verses 24, 34, 47. Uh, Daniel 3 and 5. In Isaiah chapter 14, God uses Babylon as a symbol of Satan because Babylon was so hostile and devastating to God's work and his people. In the New Testament book of Revelation, the term Babylon is used to signify a religious kingdom that is an enemy of God's spiritual Israel, which is his church. You can read more about that in Revelation 14, verses, uh, verse 8, Revelation 14, verse 8, and Revelation 16, verse 19. So we've just answered our question, what is the literal meaning of the word Babylon and what is its origin? We just looked at some Bible verses to help us to understand that the word uh, Babel or Babel means confusion. We understand, we should understand uh, clearly uh, what, uh, what that means, Babylon, you know, the history of, of Babylon and so forth. So friend, we're going to stop there for today. I had some notes to continue more, but, uh, you know, continue with some more um, information, but it's almost time and I don't want to go over time today. Um, I want to stop there. The Holy Spirit is, is telling me just to go ahead and just stop right there for today. We did our a review from last week over the past couple of weeks, actually, and we uh, covered a little bit of today. So friend, I encourage you to go back and listen 
to this episode again in case you missed anything. Uh, scroll back to our previous episodes and listen to our previous episodes leading up to this current lesson study. Once again, this lesson study is called That Other Woman. Look for Eyes on Prophecy, That Other Woman, as well as the previous lessons. Just look for Eyes on Prophecy and you'll find uh, Who is the Antichrist, The Mark of the Beast, Angel Messages, Angel Messages from Space, which is speaking about the three angels' messages, and there are many others. Let us close with a word of prayer. Loving Father, thank you so much that we had this opportunity to study your word. Help us to continue studying your word on our own, to be diligent students of your word. And until we meet next time, by your grace, as we move through the rest of this Sabbath and into a new week, continue to be with us, to protect us from danger seen and unseen, to be, uh, um, to oversee everything that is happening in our lives and to continue to uh, show your love and care for us throughout the upcoming week. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, thank you so much for joining me for another edition of Eyes on Prophecy right here on the WSLM Radio Ministry Podcast. My name is Pastor Vince. Um, have a blessed rest of your Sabbath. Have a blessed week uh, to come. And may the Lord be with you. And uh, by his grace, we'll come back together next Sabbath for, for part four of our series called That Other Woman right here on Eyes on Prophecy on the WSLM Radio Ministry Podcast. Be blessed.